Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about the Copper Cube game engine. Now, if you're a regular to this channel, uh, you may know I did a tutorial series on this game engine in the past, so I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on the engine itself, but I will link to that and show you it briefly in a little bit. But the reason why we were talking about Copper Cube today is because Copper Cube 6.5 was just released, the first update in quite a while, and we're going to jump in and take a look what it's all about. But first, a bit of an overview about Copper Cube itself. If you want to go ahead and grab Copper Cube, it is available for Windows and Mac OS. Again, there is a completely free version. Uh, we'll talk about what the pro version has to offer, but the free version is full functioning for the most part. You, you get, uh, you can create and publish games, commercialize them, whatever you want. You're just going to have a couple of features missing and the dreaded splash screen. If you want to grab it, it's available at ambiera.com uh, forward slash copper cube. I'll have this linked in the linked article down below, so don't worry about that too much. Again, available for Windows and Mac OS. If you're wondering what Copper Cube's all about, it's basically an easy to use 3D game engine. It's one of the easiest to use 3D game engines out there. It's kind of on the same level as like Game Guru, but probably a little bit more polished, I would say. Um, it supports Mac OS, Windows, Android apps, WebGL, HTML5. You'll notice iOS uh, is missing from that list, unfortunately. Um, although, it may be... No, no, I don't think so. Uh, on top of that, it's very easy to use. Uh, simple model viewers to full 3D games with just a few clicks. There's a lot of like pre-built building blocks in there, so you don't need to use any programming. But if you want to, you can extend it using the JavaScript language. Uh, a number of games on Steam have been created and published using Copper Cube. Uh, there is a professional version available. Like I said, we'll, we'll get back to what that uh, entails in just a bit. And it's great for all kinds of games. But if you want to, just grab it. Uh, you can download it completely free. No real strings attached attached or anything like that. And we'll get, again, to explain what you do get in the pro version in a minute. So now back to what 6.5 is all about. And one of the nicest things here is I'm getting older, my vision sucks, and watching a non-optimized application on a 4K monitor is just beyond my ability anymore. So I really appreciate high DPI support. Basically, high DPI support just means like kind of like a, a good pixel scaling. So it doesn't look really, really tiny on a really large display. Uh, we've got faster frame rates. Um, so previously it was capped at 60 frames per second. Uh, now you can set a value like 120. I guess in the world where we now have 240 and I think even 360 hertz monitors out there, that is definitely useful. So if you want to increase the frame rates, you now can do so yourself. Uh, there are support for large scripts. Um, the, the app will be bundled as a zip file automatically. It can be sent to macOS users and run that way. No longer necessary to manually set execution flags using schmod. I guess that's important. Uh, small changes to the UI everywhere. The biggest change is that the Create 3D Element toolbar on the top of the editor now shows labels by default. Uh, a couple of changes across the board. So we're getting kind of into the, the nitty gritty little things. Um, uh, Mac OS also has support for high DPI displays. We got Windows 11 support, uh, some updated versions, so on and so forth. So that's what's new in CopperCube 6.5. Uh, now, I mentioned a couple of times there is a pro version. What does that actually mean? Well, you can grab the free version. You have unlimited scenes and apps, no royalties, no revenue limits, and those are the targeted platforms you can hit. So those are all the same across all versions. And then you got a professional version, uh, which is 37 euro apparently per platform. Um, and here you're getting post-processing effects, video playback, customized screen logo. So if you don't like a splash screen at the start, that's the difference. And there is a command line interface available. There's also a studio version for 126 euro. And the only difference there is you're getting the game client source code as well. So if you really wanted to get into the nitty gritty, or if you're going to be creating a commercial game and you're going to be extending Copper Cube yourself, that's probably the version you need. If you just don't want a splash screen, you want to have better special effects and so on, that's the version you need. If you just want to make games, that's the version you need. And again, you can use the free version to create and sell games. You're just losing... Uh, um, some special effects, video playback, uh, and you're going to have a splash screen. So uh, I think it's a very reasonable pricing. I, I like this structure overall. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, that is the different tiers that are available. Now, as I mentioned when I started this video, I have done a tutorial on uh, this uh, game engine over on Dev Game. So that's D-E-V-G-A dot me. Um, and you're going to find here the Copper Cube tutorial here. So this was for version 6, 6.5. You're going to be pretty much the same thing. As they mentioned in the update, the UI changed slightly. Uh, but it'll walk you through everything you need to know. Uh, working in Copper Cube is super, super simple. It comes with a number of animated uh, models and stuff to work with right out of the box, which is actually really useful if you're new to game programming in the first place. So this walks through everything you need to know. Then we walk through things like uh, creating a train using the game engine. So yeah, there is a full train engine in there, by the way. Texturing it, shaping the train, and so on. So you get an idea of what this engine is capable of here. 
Uh, then we go through creating a camera. And again, it's all kind of predefined for you. So if you need a first person shooter camera, it's got all of the mouse and keyboard supports normally used in a common keyboard. They're configurable and so on. But as you can see here, you've got a number of presets out of the box. Makes life easy to work with, but this walks you through creating the camera. And then we get into the programming side of things. And most programming is just done by basically, like here you're seeing I'm adding a behavior to an object, game behavior, um, and I'm not sure what I did here, uh, whatever I picked there. And see here, you can trigger behaviors by events. So when a key is pressed or when proximity to something and so on, and it's very straightforward kind of cause and effect type system. You've got actions also. Um, and these are kind of like verbs, things that you could do, play a sound, um, add a thing to the scene, so on and so forth. So that is your basic uh, programming method. Uh, all of these behaviors, uh, actions, and so on. Um, and then I got into a little bit on collisions and in, in physics. So yeah, there is a physics system out of the box, by the way, which is pretty cool. So you can see it in action right there. And as I mentioned earlier on, you have code options as well. So you see here, I extend, uh, I basically add new functionality as a plugin uh, using the JavaScript programming language. You can see a simple extension right here. Um, that is called, it will add in my new script. Uh, or you can actually add in a script directly uh, inside of the scripting window and attach it to something there. Um, you got a scenes and rooms set up. So this is how you organize your world into different pieces. You've even got like a very simple and really ugly uh, 3D room setup. So if you want to make old kind of Doom style uh, assets, you can do so easily. Uh, you can import your own things in. The file formats are pretty extensive. I imagine they use Asimp, to be honest, because it looks like the standard Asimp list. We even got some old stuff like the old Quake levels. Uh, you can bring in milkshake stuff, but on top of that, you've got support for like the Wavefront OBJ format, 3DS format, um, ASCII scene export, Collada is in there, FBX is in there. So most of the model formats you were looking for are in there. Uh, animations come in fully animated. And yeah, that is it. By the way, there is also, uh, so that was the text side of things. There is a video tutorial of using Copper Cube as well. For the record, I like Copper Cube. I think it's a great um, introductory 3D game engine. A lot of the things that I would recommend uh, for beginners aren't necessarily 3D engines. And if you're looking at something like, say, the Godot engine, you're going to have to get into coding. So when it comes to like no code 3D game engines, You've got Construct is slowly moving its way into 3D, but otherwise you've got like BuildBox and GameGuru. Uh, it's probably the two easiest to use. And then CopperCube. And of those three, if I was to pick something to start with, I would personally pick CopperCube um, for sure, actually. Uh, so if you want to check it out, again, it is available for Windows and Mac OS. You can grab the full functioning version of it. You can even create, publish games, share them with your friends, everything else. Uh, just do be aware, if you want like post-processing effects or you don't want a splash screen, you're going to have to get the pro version. But again, the pricing is really quite reasonable, I have to say, too. So if you get to the point where you've got a game you want to ship to other people... 37 euro is probably quite a reasonable price to pay. So I do like their pricing structure. Uh, that is the uh, 6.5 update, high DPI support, faster frame rates, larger script support, updates to the UI, Windows 11 support, uh, Mac OS high DPI support, uh, and a few other things in here as well. So that's CopperCube 6.5. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.